Alright, I think we're just about ready. Let's see if we can do this. Hey, what's up guys? How you doing today? Friday, good day. It is. Don't have to work today on a Friday, that's always nice. So, uh, gonna try and make some cookies today. And along with making the cookies, uh, I have a traditional Afghanistan dish that I'm going to attempt to recreate um, from my brother. So, yeah, should be pretty good. Uh, I'm not much of a baker, so we'll see how the baking aspect of this works out. <laughs> uh, for starters, uh, I'm just going to make the make our batter and our dough, if you will, and put that in the refrigerator and let it sit, and then we'll work on our we'll work on our di dinner lunch here. Um, so, first start, we are going to go with the dry ingredients first. Um, we're going to mix together four cups of flour. Start one. Now, it sort of recommends, uh, I mean, it doesn't say so, but you can sift the flour. Um, I did not sift the flour. I don't have a sifter to do that, so I just gotta go with um, without it. <laughs> but uh, all right, so we got four. I have a recipe written down here from my mom. It's our great great grandfather's cookie recipe. So it's uh, it's pretty old and pretty interesting and should be well if I make it right it should be really good um, my mom's made it plenty of times and it's delicious every time she's made it so let's see what we can come up with so we're just gonna follow the recipe pretty much to the tea here so we got four cups of flour next up is uh, what do we got here we're gonna mix our baking powder salt and sugar and then the shortening so this calls for two heaping teaspoons of baking powder. So we got our baking powder over here. We got my teaspoon measures right here. So it said two heaping. Oh wait, that's a half a teaspoon. Two heaping teaspoons of baking powder. So looks like a heaping powder to me, right? One, two. Sounds good. So we got baking powder, and then we add the salt, and we got a quarter teaspoon of salt. So I just realized that they probably don't want to use kosher salt. We probably want to use regular salt, right? Perfect. So a quarter teaspoon of salt. And baking powder, salt, and sugar. We got a lot of sugar to add to this. Two and a half cups of sugar. This is going to be a delicious cookie. I can already tell. <laughs> so. Alright. So one... I'm going to need a bigger bowl. Holy crap. Two. And a half. Wow. This is going to be a lot of sugar, guys. I am definitely going to need a bigger bowl. Let me see what I have. I know I have some. Oh, I do have a nice big bowl to mix in. Hang on one second. Let me come back here and grab this. Uh, it's so big I can't even store it in the kitchen because I don't have any room to store it in the kitchen. It's that big. Where'd it go is the question now. Alright, found it. We are good. Let's 
be a much better mixing bowl here for this. Beautiful. A little more room to work with. And then we're going to add a cup and a half of butter to this or shortening. So the way we're going to do that, and then we can mix it all together. But first, we got our powder in there. So I want to mix that up a little bit first. Just to make sure that gets mixed around nicely at the start. This is going to make a lot of cookies, too. The recipe says it will make about six dozen. Apex, what's going on? How's it going? I saw you were in stream on Monday. I, I, I when I was scrolling through all the chat after stream, I saw you were in there. I didn't didn't see your message last week. But how's it going, man? Good to see you. We're almost at 100 followers, so I figured what I'd do is I got a cookie recipe here that's almost 100 years old from my great great grandfather who owned a, owned a bakery in the early 1900s, and this was his recipe for cookies and I just got it from my mom recently and she used to make it every Christmas and it was amazing so I'm gonna try and recreate it and if it comes out delicious and good I want to do a giveaway today and a couple of giveaways I'm gonna give away a few things well cookies but a few um, yeah and then I got a traditional Afghanistan dish my brother is in the Air Force and he uh, He's been to Afghanistan, and this is uh, one of their dishes that he's made over there. Um, it's called a, a Kab Kabuli, Kabuli Paleo, right? Kabuli Paleo. That's how you pronounce it, I believe. It's a tricky one. And so once we get the dough made and I get it in the fridge, then I want to start on that because each of these are about an hour. So this takes about an hour to sit in the fridge. The Kabuli takes about an hour to simmer on the stove. So... While this is sitting in there for an hour, we're working on the Kabali, and then when the Kabali is ready to go and sit for an hour, we can work on putting these out and cutting them. I am doing very well, thank you. It is Friday. I don't have to work today. It's a good day. Alright, so we got our flour, sugar and stuff mixed up. I'm just trying to get our, uh, get all of our um, powders in here all mixed together real nice, you know, the baking soda, the... Uh, do we add soda? No, we just added baking powder, huh? When is it at? Oh, we had the baking soda with the liquid later. Okay. So, I'm not a baker, and <laughs> uh, I'm a cook. And so, this baking recipe, like I said, is from my mom. And so, I'm just following this recipe here that we're using. It's an old family time recipe. And uh, we're just going to see how it works out. So, the next thing up is we're going to take a, a cup and a half of butter. Basically, a full stick of butter is a half a cup. Cybernetti, what's going on? How are you doing today, man? So, I checked out that dish that you were talking about, that meat dish, uh, that Bosnian dish. Looks amazing, and I'm either going to do it tomorrow or next week, but I definitely want to try that for sure. It looks great. We'll give it a shot one of these days here soon. No joke. And, um... Today, though, speaking of um, some out-of-country stuff, I'm going to make an Afghanistan Kabali. Yeah, early stream today, because I'm off work, it's Friday, I don't normally stream on Friday. I got a new job, so my hours have been kind of weird, so I'll always be streaming on Monday nights for sure, because um, I told him I don't care, I'm streaming Monday nights. And then the rest of the week, um, I'm going to try and make sure I do at least two, three streams a week, it's just going to be might not be on a set schedule. I'm going to try. I just got to see how the work is. But I like Saturday streaming idea too. So I'm going to go with that. But yeah, so today we're going to make cookies. And we're going to make Afghanistan Kabali. So for starters, we're going to put this butter in. And you want to put it in little bits at a time. So I'm just going to use my cheese knife scissor cutting board deal here this thing is absolutely amazing again I don't know where I found this thing at it ended up in my drawer at my house one day and I love it um, so you just use it here to let's see how well it works for the butter I know it works great for cheese those of you who are here for that saw let's see how it works for butter though I don't think it's working as well for butter 
<laughs> Might as well just grab a regular little knife. I thought I'd be fancy and cool and try it. I like gadgets. I take that from my mom. So we're gonna, when you add the butter, you want to. It's like making a pie dough or a pie crust. I don't really understand how this part works, but you know, you'll keep adding flour when rolling. Um, start with four cups. Okay, you'll add more later. Don't over mix, but cut shortening in with dough cutter. Mix as you would pie dough. Uh, oh, dog needs outside. Can I go outside, bud? Yo, dude. All right. <laughs> Oh, nice, man. I'm glad I cheered you up with that. Yeah, I was looking at that this afternoon. I, I, I was looking that up, and I was like, man, that looks fantastic. And it doesn't look ex very expensive either. I might even be able to do it as a $10 meal. Um, now, I did have some questions then to ask for you, if you don't mind. Uh, one of them said that it uses um, one pound of ground lamb and one pound of ground beef, and you mix the two together. And it looked like you roll them into little like sausage logs looking things and then you put them in a pita bread, right? And uh, But one of them was talking about mixing both lamb and beef. And if that's the case, that's really cool. Um, but I was also wondering if it's just a beef or if there's other um, animals you can add to it or what. But it, it basically looks like a, uh, maybe like a Bosnian version of a, uh, of a hamburger except in a hot dog form. Does that sound about right? I know I'm Americanizing it. You know, that's what we do. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, but uh, I'm just trying to relate it to other dishes and how I can cook it and how it'll, how it'll be and how it'll taste and if I can add any creativity of my own to it. So kind of like in the spelling bee when they give them a word to spell and they ask the origin and they ask to use it in a sentence and all that stuff. Um, kind of do the same thing with recipes and food you know you ask what's the origin what kind of other seasonings can you use what other meats is it good with you know what other ways are traditional how else can I doctor it to make it my own you know oh okay so that's basically what they are. yeah no that's awesome I um I am very interested in different countries cuisines and stuff like that so that sounds cool I think I messed this up with this butter. I don't know what I'm doing here. Oh, I gotta get rid of this whisk and use the uh, use the spatula. That's our problem. Like I said, I'm not a baker. Um, I'm a cook. This is my great great grandfather's recipe. So as far as um, as far as baking techniques, um, <laughs> somebody might make fun of me at some point. That's cool. I get it. I can't bake. <laughs> That's why we're gonna, we're testing ourselves. We're gonna see what we can come up with here. Um, in Bosnia, it's common to use lamb and beef as substitute for pork meat dishes because a large percent of Bosnians are mu okay. So so they so it would be made with pork, but because a lot of them are Muslims, they would use lamb or uh, beef, or is it vice versa? I'm sorry, I'm not all up to date with my religious meals. Um, <laughs> I mean, they can't eat pork for religious reasons. It's considered as yeah. But we can okay. So it would be traditionally be made with pork, but then the religious aspect changed it to a beef and lamb combo. I thought Muslims couldn't eat beef. I don't know. Like I said, I don't know my religious foods. <laughs> um, I should actually look into that one day. Just like learn some religious foods just for to understand it all better. But yeah. So beef and lamb mixture, or you could use a pork. So if you use a pork. I mean, even with beef and lamb, but if, but if you use a pork, you're almost more or less making a sausage, really, aren't you? That's awesome, though. I like sausage. Yeah, I'm excited to make it, man. Okay, they can eat beef, just not pork. Gotcha. Yeah, it's... It, it's not that I'm ignorant, dude. I just there's just so many there's just so many different religions with some can eat beef, some can eat beef, some can eat pork, some can't. There's a lot of different ones that go into it. And a lot of that too is um is because of um times of the year as well. For instance, 
I, I know the Christianity one with um, eating fish on Fridays. The reason that they eat fish on Fridays during Lent is because during the Lent is during the Easter time, you know, right around this time, right around springtime-ish, right? Well, around this time, right before Easter, it is, um, it's, uh, it's all the, all the cows, all the pigs, all your farm animals are, are pregnant right now, okay? So, like, the last thing you would want to do right before springtime is, is kill any of your livestock, sheep, pigs, any, because they all have springtime babies. You know, they have the babies in the springtime. They get decently strong through the summer so that they can start out their first winter, right? Um, it, and so during those times, um, fish would be big. You know, you wouldn't eat a lot of, uh, you wouldn't eat a lot of the beef or pig and stuff like that. You're waiting for them to all have birth and, and give birth to the babies. So, you your diet primarily can, came from a lot of fish, and so then they um, they keep the tradition today around that time and they eat the fish on the Fridays. Obviously now with um, commercial farming and stuff, they have baby cows and slaughter all times of the year and it doesn't matter anymore. But back in the day, it actually mattered. <laughs> I don't know. I always find stuff like that kind of cool, you know. Because I mean I know it's religion, but it's it's uh what I like about it is it's um. It's history, you know, it's it it's historical stuff. Same with I don't know the full reason, but I'm sure there's historical and religious for why they don't eat the pork or why they don't eat beef or something. Alright, so there's a cream cheese mixture for it as well. You dip the sausage, tear off a piece of the pita. Nice, see? That that's important stuff, man. I gotta know these things. I gotta look that up. I'm gonna mix all that together. I'm gonna make that. It's gonna be awesome. Yeah, I'll get the cream cheese mixture. We'll do the whole works. And my butter is not mixing as well as I, it's still too hard, I think. I don't think you don't want it melty soft but you don't want it hard as a rock and I'm still pretty solid so but you can see it's starting to make like a pie dough right um, so let's see how it works <laughs> again disclaimer I'm not a baker <laughs> but we have fun so K-Mock is that how K-Mock K-Mock that uh I have to look that up, cause I'm actually using some cream cheese today for these cookies. I'm gonna make a uh, cream cheese icing. I like cream cheese icing over just straight um, milk icing. I don't know. The cream cheese icing just has more of a, I don't know, creamy cheesier texture. <laughs> it says not to work it a whole lot, but man, I'm working it a lot because I, you know, the butter and. I don't know, I think I messed up with the butter part, so I'm really trying to... Right, Apex? <laughs> Apex is probably Googling it right now, probably thinks, probably can see it. I, I, can't, I can't do too much Googling searches and stuff when I'm streaming, because all my internet power is going straight to the stream, so I can... Uh, <laughs> can't do much while I'm live, you know. So I'm just going to use my hand and kind of break some of this butter up. I don't know if that's right or not, but we're going to improvise. Yeah, it's starting to get that dough. Yeah, see, you can kind of starting to get that pressy kind of feature to it. I think that's what they mean by not overworking it. Don't do what I just did. So, you know, that's cool. Hmm. I think that might work. There's some butter clumps, but we got liquids to add and other stuff, so I think we might be okay. We'll find out. We'll set it to the side for now. May let the butter melt a little bit more on it. Come back to it. All right.
delicious. Okay. Um, next, we have vanilla, sour milk, and baking soda. Now, if you don't know what sour milk is, it's time to pay attention because uh, I had to learn this myself, actually. So, um, what it is is basically, so you have buttermilk, right? There's buttermilk and there's sour milk. Buttermilk basically is sour milk. But, you can make your own sour milk um, with just regular milk. And some people, some things I read say they're both about the same, but then others say you need to use sour milk when it says sour milk. So this recipe calls for sour milk. And because we're streaming, I'm going to make sour milk. We're going to make it. It's super easy. All it is is um, one teaspoon of white vinegar per cup of, per cup of milk. So we're going to see how this works out. Um, and then we need, um, so we're going to add vanilla. Right, how much vanilla? One teaspoon. That ain't much. All right, so we're going to mix it into here, right? All right, so I got my teaspoon out. Where's my vanilla extract? I got you somewhere. All right. I cheated. This is imitation vanilla. It's not real vanilla. I don't know why. I don't know why it's in my cupboard. Just throw it away and get real vanilla. Okay, a teaspoon of vanilla. And then, uh oh, go back on. Okay, mm, it smells good. I love vanilla. Um, baking soda, again, mix until blended. Oh, so this will be the final step, basically. Yeah. We add the, uh, oh, we gotta add. When do we add the eggs? Sorry guys, I thought I read this right. And now I'm all messed up. <laughs> Add vanilla, sour milk, baking soda. Again, mix until blended. You do not want to overwork dough. She'll do at this point. Hmm, the original recipe is... I'm trying to figure out where it says that it doesn't say to add the eggs anywhere. Um, <laughs> so maybe that's part of the liquid part with the sour milk. But Or maybe I should have used the eggs with the butter. Maybe that's what that was. Uh, vanilla. Okay, yeah. So the, okay, the first part of it, it's not written with the bottom part. So the first part, okay, so I mixed the eggs with our milk here. That's what I thought. I just... I know baking can be very specific sometimes, so I just wanted to make sure I didn't mess it up, you know? That's why I'm not a baker, <laughs> because, you know, you gotta do them in certain orders and mix them in certain ways, because it makes it better, and I'm not good at that. <laughs> Alright. But we will be. We're gonna become pros. We're gonna learn. We're gonna do it. Yeah, I really want to try that. The problem is here in America, they don't sell, um, it's kind of illegal to sell non homogenized or non uh, pasteurized milk, you know, to get like just raw milk. Um, I know a couple of farmers around town. I live in Montana. So I know some farmers and ranchers, so I might be able to get raw milk. I would love to get a hold of some fresh raw milk like that and try it. That'd be really cool. So we got to add three beaten eggs. So we're going to beat these eggs first. If I can get this shell out of there. All right, so we got three eggs in here. I'm going to wix those up real quick. You probably, well, the problem is though with just using regular milk to raw milk is if you use regular milk, what, what you're talking about with the raw milk is when you boil it and you let it cool and all the stuff, the cream that you skim off the top and whatnot, you're talking about you use that stuff skimmed off the top and mix that with the salt, right? Not the liquid underneath the stuff that you skim off, right? And if that's the case, when you use regular milk, um, they've already done a lot of that process. So when you're trying to like make your own cheeses and stuff like that using 
store-bought regular milk isn't always the best way because they they've cooked boy they've already boiled it cooked it and removed all that stuff from it you know what i mean um again i'm not i'm not a cheese maker so i don't know every logistic about it but i do know that like when something when somebody says to use raw milk there's a reason they're using actual raw milk as opposed to store-bought milk um I had a measuring cup here somewhere because I just washed it and now I don't know where I put it. How did I do that? Where? Oh, it's probably over here, right? Nope. Oh, there it is. Yeah, it is over here somewhere. Alright. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I, 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 I can find a farmer maybe and see what I can do about it pretty cool so we're gonna measure a cup of milk and we're gonna put one teaspoon of vinegar into it and make it sour because that's what it says all right um all right make sure it's just one teaspoon all right This should be interesting. And curdle the milk. Or whatever. Sour it. I don't know. I don't know, I thought it was going to be more dramatic than that, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I, I really expected, like, some curdling action or, like, I don't know. <laughs> that was lame. Um, Alright, where's my whisk? Back to normal. <laughs> I'm, like, sitting here waiting, like, come on, something's going to happen, something's going to... Nope. And, like, I like when you're at the bar and you order one of those drinks called uh, the, the cement mixers or whatever the hell, and... Uh, they end up curd like when you put alcohol in the milk and it like curdles it up all nasty like. Hmm. Guess it smells sour. So we'll just pour that with that. And that's our liquid mix. Um, oh, we need uh, we need to add our baking soda. Um, how much baking soda? One rounded teaspoon. So let's rinse this off. Yeah, you're probably completely right. Um, I'm originally from the Pittsburgh area, uh, believe it or not. Um, I grew up 20 miles outside of Pittsburgh. We had a huge Greekish, Bosnian, like whole Middle Eastern style, like all that area. Um, real big uh, food areas. We even had like Greek days and stuff. One of the things I want to do on stream one of these days, because I haven't had one in a long time since I've been back home, is I want to do grape leaves, uh, Greek stuff, grape leaves. Oh my God, they're so good. Um, so, uh, so yeah, I've never, I never had it there, but next time I go back home to Pittsburgh, I will look around and find the real deal stuff. Um, baking soda, baking soda, there we are, baking soda. Oh, your dad was born? Nice. I mean, technically, I, I was born in, um, St. Petersburg, Florida. My parents and family is originally from the Pittsburgh area. Uh, back in the 80s, my um, my mom and dad went to Florida and moved there and lived there for a few years. They had me, and when I was like less than a year old, they moved back to Pittsburgh. So I don't remember or know anything of Florida. I just know Pittsburgh. I was born in Pittsburgh, but my whole family and I was raised and everything from uh, in Pittsburgh. You know, <laughs> um, that's awesome. Yeah, Pitts. So, so do you live in America now? Then are you are you in America now, or are you overseas? One rounded teaspoon of baking soda. Alright, let's make it rounded. That looks rounded. Bust that clumper up. There we go. Dump that in. Cool. Mix that. <clears throat> now is the part where we mix it into here. Let's see what we can come up with. I like to make a little bowl inside of there. I don't know if you can really tell, 
but yeah you can see the center of the bowl there and see how I kind of like made a bowl inside a bowl it helps with the mixing process a lot oh yeah that's right you were uh, you're you're somewhere you're in uh, England going to Idaho nice what part of Idaho? I'm not too far from there. I'm actually like three hours from the Ohio, uh, Idaho borderline. I'm in Montana here. Um, I lived in Idaho for a little while. I was in Coeur d'Alene and Boise and is it Bakersfield? Bakers? Something? I don't remember. I worked on some potato farms in Idaho and uh, I traveled all over Idaho a lot. It was a lot of fun. An hour east of Boise. Oh, nice. So you're relatively close to... Uh, Montana, um, near uh, Yellowstone National Park then, right? Like near the west entrance of Yellowstone? That's where I live is outside of, um, I originally moved out here to work for Yellowstone, and I now live um, just outside of Yellowstone. I love it. So it says not to work it too much, so I don't want to work it too much, but at the same time, I don't know what too much is. <laughs> um, so, I'm not a baker, but we're getting there. This looks about right, though. This is our dough. We'll need probably a little more flour, and then uh, it's just going to sit. Mountain home. Not sure where that's at, but... Rinse that. Throw my milk jug away here. I might need to add some more flour to this. I don't know. Is it supposed to be this wet? Are cookies supposed to be like super wet? Uh, I don't know if they were supposed to be more like doughy or... But I don't know. I'm not a baker. <laughs> but I'm trying. Um, it looks cool though. It looks about right. I mean, I remember when mom made this stuff, you know, it was always... You lick the batter and a spoon. Let's try it. Mmm. It's so good. It's definitely right. It's definitely, the flavor is definitely right. Um, don't worry about the raw egg. I've been eating it all my life. I've been licking mom's batters like these when she makes cakes and puddings and everything else with raw egg. I've been eating it my whole life. It ain't going to kill me today. I'm just not sure if it's supposed to be this doughy or not. Um, but um, I don't know. That's what it called for. And, oh, you know, and then we're going to lay it out and roll it out, so maybe we'll use more flour then. Um, I don't know. <laughs> that was four cups. Yeah, that's all right. I think that'll work. Guess we'll find out, huh? Well, it's got to be in a form, so you're going to roll it like a dough, so I mean... All right. I talked myself into it. I'm going to throw a half a cup of flour extra just to help it a little bit. Because we're going to end up adding a lot more flour anyways um, as we dough this out and roll it. And there we go. Okay. We're there. Yep, that's right. Maybe that was too much flour. Maybe we were right where we wanted to be. I don't know. I never made it before. I got plenty of ingredients that we can make like 20 more of these doughs if we wanted to. So um, if it does come out bad or wrong, we can try again. We got enough. I know what it's supposed to look like and taste like when they're done. I'm not going to be able to make it what it exactly looks like because I don't have the Ninja Turtle cutout cookies like Mom has. But, um, you know. <laughs> so that looks about, that looks like dough. I mean, we're there. So I'm going to throw that in the fridge. And, uh, southeast of Boise. Okay. So we're going to throw this in the fridge like it's supposed to. And like it's supposed to shit wood. Don't fall off of there. Move some things around. Alright, move that there. Move our cream cheeses. That big bowl right there. Okay. We're looking the door. The other stuff. Cool. We'll come back to that in an hour and see how it is. And so we're gonna we're gonna make our uh, dinner now or lunch or whatever time it is wherever you're watching. For me, it's gonna be like a lunch dinner kind of meal. Um, first, let me move some of my bacon stuff out of the way. So, the dish that I'm going to be making um, came from my brother. 
My brother has been in the Air Force for five, six, seven, six or seven years now. Um, and uh, he served two tours in Afghanistan and uh, schooling and everything else. And he had a lot of Afghanistan teachers to learn from. And he also learned authentic recipes and dishes. And they are amazing. Um, super good. So, I don't think I've had this dish yet. Uh, I've had some of the dishes he's made, and they he made one. It's like a it's like a dumpling thing. I don't really know. He makes these little triangle things and like folds them, and then you like boil it for a second. I'm gonna have to get that one from him too, cause that one's really good. Um, so, uh, so yeah. So he sent me this recipe, and I was like, this looks bomb. I'm gonna have to try it. I'm gonna have to make it, and. Um, so let me uh, let me run back to the computer room real quick and switch. I have another uh, I have another picture loaded for the recipe there, so I can switch over to our different recipe. Oh, nice! Five hours from Yellowstone. Heck yeah! There we are. Got her switched over. That camera is out of focus. Really bad. I'm gonna have to fix that. <laughs> Yellowstone is a beautiful place. If you're only five hours away, you're gonna have to definitely go check that place out. Alright, I can put this flower away for the time being. I will need it back. Um you need my cutting board. coffee does the body good um so for starters on this you can see the recipe there and I have it lost it had it don't have it where the heck did I put it did I carry it back here with me like a chump come on yeah I brought it back to my computer room I have the basic idea of how to put this together, but when dealing with a foreign food and something a little different, it's nice to have uh, your recipe on hand. So, first thing we're going to do is we're going to chop up an onion, and we need to chop, oh, uh, <coughs> carrots. I didn't chop, I'm not going to chop carrots. It says the best is to use matchstick carrots. Um, they chop their carrots very small. I probably should have just got carrots and chopped them with you guys. Um, I don't know. I got match get stick carrots because that's what I said. I want to be a little closer to it. I guess I should have just cut match stick carrots. Sorry, guys. I'm a failure. Um, <laughs> There's a bug in your Twitch website button. Oh, on... On what? On the link on my website or the link on there? Underneath, like underneath my video? I'm sorry, I'm not quite sure where at. I know at one point I had something messed up before and I think I fixed it, so maybe I still have something else messed up. Website URL in front of your Twitch. Is that on my Twitch page or on my uh, website page or on my Facebook page or on my... <laughs> yeah, oh, under your video where it says website. Oh, it won't link to my website? Ah, oh, dang. I'll have to fix that. Well, the website is, if you see it there, the website is just www.thedudesfoods.com, just like it is for the um, Twitch and everything else, so... Um, but thank you for that. I'm going to go and change that and fix that after stream for sure. Uh, but, uh, use your website domain name as your Twitch username. 
Alright, now I gotta go back and look at what you're talking about. <laughs> Alright, let's see. Let's scroll down. So on my channel. If I scroll down to the website. Oh, okay, I see what you mean. Twitch.tv. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's funny. That's not quite right, is it? <laughs> Can I change it while I'm live? Is that possible to do? Oh, it looks like it. Well, uh, yeah, it says image links to, and I just have the website, and I don't know why it would say Twitch before it. I don't have anything in it to say otherwise. Hmm. I see it, yeah, like when I go, I wonder why that does that. Because when I look, like I, when I look at under, under, under uh, the, the changing part. Hmm. Yeah, it's still, still doing it. Um, I'll have to work on that later. Um, because I have no idea why it would do that. Because when I look under the editing part and the change it, it doesn't show that part there. That's super weird. Thanks for pointing that out. I will, uh, I will definitely work on that, um, after stream. Um, because I don't know why it's doing that. And we got food to cook. <laughs> um, but yeah, because I wanted to go to the website. Maybe I'll just delete that piece and then make a new one and redo it, and maybe that'll that'll work. But yeah, thank you for pointing that out. I I always like to know when something's wrong so I can correct it. I mean, yeah, I will never I will never get mad at somebody for telling me that I did something wrong or that something's I need to fix something because. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I wanted to try something. I'm going to try with, um, every time I cut onions, I want to try a different way to have them not burn my eyeballs. So today, I'm going to do the olive oil method. I so said to put olive oil on your knife blade when you cut the onion, and I already started cutting the onion, so I might have not get full effect of what we're trying to achieve. But it said to use olive oil, and when you cut the onion, it'll help with the tears. Um, onions destroy me. I get super teary-eyed and everything. Onions absolutely wreck my system of eyes. So, um, I, uh, I'm going to start a new thing where every time I cut an onion, I'm going to Google a way to prevent your eyes from tearing up, and I'm going to try each one and see how well they work and don't. <laughs> and then we can rate them, because I'm very sensitive to onions, so if they work really well, I will definitely notice. <laughs> and if they don't, I will, you guys will notice. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to attempt that. Um, so for starters, we're going to cut that onion up. I got my nice big cast iron Dutch oven skillet here. Love this thing. This thing is also about 100 years old. It's my girlfriend's great great grandmothers or girlfriend's great grandmothers or something like that as well from the early 1900s and whatnot. So this thing's pr uh, this is probably close to more like 85, 90 years old. But yeah, this thing's solid. I love it. I cook so much stuff in it. All right, so the idea is we're going to put that in. Um, it asks for four ounces of vegetable oil. That's a half a cup of vegetable oil. That is a lot. Um, but it's also saying a quarter cup is going to be used later for something else. So maybe we're going to start with a quarter cup and see where that gets us. So I mean, that's a lot of vegetable oil to saute some oil, onions in. But I was asking my brother about that, and he had said that over in Middle East or so, they use a lot of oil in their foods. Um, I was curious why. I'm not sure. But he said they use a lot of oils. Um, what's up next? What's up? Oh, yep. So we need the oil. We're going to go with a quarter cup to start. See how that looks in here. I guess that's a regular amount of oil, quarter cup. That ain't much. I'd probably put about that. That's all right. 
Oh yeah, I might actually put more in that, put the whole half cup. See, so I don't measure stuff in the kitchen. I just splash and pour. So, so that's a half cup of oil. And that's probably what I would have poured in there anyways, not thinking about it. Um, because that's right about enough to coat the bottom. So, yeah, so you're going to brown that. And then we add a pound of uh, beef and whatnot. And... It's telling me to add the salt with the water, but when I saute onions, I like to add the salt with the onions when I saute them. It helps pull, it helps pull it out, it helps pull the flavor or juices out or whatever the scientific portion of that is. So we will add salt to begin with, and it only needs a teaspoon. It's about a teaspoon. All right, so we're gonna get this on the oven. We're cooking. Let's switch up our cameras. There we go. Actually, let me fix this camera for you guys because it's blurry as crap. Why is it so blurry? I just reset it too. These cameras bother me sometimes because they like to go out of focus randomly on their own. There we go. Is that better? Yeah. A little better in focus. All right. So something I ask, and I haven't asked you guys yet. Um, <laughs> yeah. What the attitude of don't measure, the attitude of measure, because I I don't measure, and then th that's why this is interesting for me because I have to measure. <laughs> um. So let's kick that on. Salt. Let's grab our. Uh, spoon here. Next up, so this is going to require some seasoning sets. Uh, oh, before that, I was going to say, um, one thing I always ask, and I haven't yet today, is what did you guys have for dinner this week? Or what are you having for dinner tonight? Or what did you have for dinner last night? Or what are you having? It's the weekend. Are you going to barbecue? Is it nice? Are you having something for Saturday or Sunday? Um, I'm always interested in what you guys are eating. You know, I'm nosy like that. Um, uh, so, as I was saying, I got that little bowl out because this is going to require a couple of different seasonings. And instead of trying to go over your pan and measure out each individual seasoning one after the next, I am just going to take um, a bowl, pour all my seasonings into it. That way they're already all measured out, all ready to go, and I don't have to worry about it. Uh, so, alright, got the oven on because that's going to preheat to 350 for our cookies. I got our onions heating up on our cast iron stream died oh no did it die for anybody else no stream come back uh, it says it's live on my side Maybe it's yours? Oh, okay. Maybe a little hiccup on your end, maybe? I don't know. Maybe a hiccup on my end, who knows? OBS and Twitch and everything, like, it's all awesome and it works great, but it's like, it's like right on the borderline of about to fall apart, you know what I mean? Like, like you have everything working and like there's just, you don't even know why, like things just like stop working sometimes and things, so like, you're always on like, you're always on the edge of like, when is it, when's it going to fail? Because like, you can test and set everything up all day long. And uh, between OBS, it's probably usually your own computer, or like my own computer, OBS or something, um, just fails on you for some reason. <laughs> um, so, uh, back to the seasonings. <laughs> um, so I'm going to, one and a half teaspoons each of cinnamon, cumin, and cardamom. Um, what I learned today is cardamom is very expensive. <laughs> um, it's like five bucks for this little bottle of... So I'm, I'm going to have to actually look up what cardamom is um, and figure out why it's so much, because that's crazy. All right, so a teaspoon and a half of cumin. I love cumin. Really good stuff. So one and a half teaspoons of that. Then we're going to add one and a half teaspoons of our um, 
cinnamon. Interesting. I love the smell of, like, just fresh, straight cinnamon. So good. Alright. And then the powdered gold, I mean, um, cardamom. <laughs> stuff is ridiculous. Ooh, airtight. The whole jar popped when I opened it. That was kind of cool. Mmm. If you're not sure about cardamom, cardamom almost smells like... I don't want to say it smells like Vicks, but it almost smells like a Vicks vapor rub, in a way. It's got, a, like, a cooling flavor. I don't know. Maybe that's just me. Oh, I spilled some. It's like a dollar fifty. I just dumped on the ground there. <laughs> no, not that much. Um, all right, there we go. <clears throat> Does smell good. And then, um, oh, a teaspoon of salt. One and one teaspoon. Uh. Oh, we gotta cut up some. Uh, we gotta cut up some beef for this too while our onions are cooking. Grains of paradise. Um, I kinda know what those are. Um, I know about saffron. You ever have saffron rice? Man, saffron's like 30 bucks for a bottle that size or something. Saffron's pretty expensive. I'll have to look up that paradise thing though you mentioned. So we're just going to mix our seasonings up just a little bit. There we go. So this is going to be our main seasoning bowl. We're just going to dump that whole thing in when we're ready for our seasonings. That way we don't have to go through the whole mixing, matching process, all that. So, next up, I got my mini breaking knife, my steak cutting knife. We're going to cut some steak tips out of that. Yeah, maybe there is a little more oil than I would probably normally use, but that's alright. It's going to be really good for the... Um, for the beef. So I got a pound and a half. Um, I believe it's a... Oh, I got a brisket. I thought it was London broil. Apparently it's a brisket. And it was on sale, so we scored. Alright, so it's got a nice big fat cap on here. We're going to have to take that off. That's the first thing that's got to go. So, first I'm just going to take my knife, take my things here, we're going to put a little edge on our blade, put it at a slight angle. I think somebody says like a 12 degree angle or something like that. I don't know my exacts. I just know you just, I just know how to do it. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't sit here with a angler, but um, throw a little edge on it. Anytime you're going to butcher your meat, you always want to make sure your blade has a very nice edge to it. I gotta get a new uh, knife sharpener for this thing. Well, not a new edger, but just a new sharpener in general. Because uh, I can feel this needs a better edge to it than what I'm gonna be able to get with that. That's just an edger. It just takes burrs off for the most part. It's not gonna take a doll to a dead sharp. Alright. <clears throat> so, you set that down. What I like to do is take the tip of the knife. Here, let me get a close up for you guys here. There we are. So. I take the tip of my knife, right, and you go to the far edge of there, and you get right underneath the fat, and you're just going to cut up into it and pull it out so you have a little lip, right? And then this is why your blade is curved, okay? You're actually going to take from the base of the blade and kind of on an upward motion, almost like you're going to shave in a way, and you're just going to kind of pull back on your knife, right? And it's going to take that fat. And see how, see how we started with a little bit of meat on the fat? And as we got more down, we got less meat on the fat? Because the more meat you take off, you know, the more you're wasting. So you're just going to hold that down, start again at the base of your knife. And I'm kind of covering it. And then just pull back on your knife. And let's slide down like that. And you're going to take that fat right off of there. See that? I'm going to take it again here. Take the tip of your knife blade up. Pull that up and back like there. 
I'm trying to get it so I can show you on camera, but I'm also trying to be safe about it and do it right. So, um, you never want to come in at you. That's like so. I'm like holding it like this, trying to let you see it, but I'm also showing you bad technique because you should never be bringing the knife in at you. You always want to like. Um, if you can see how I'm kind of standing, I have the knife to the side, and I'm kind of over here. So when I miss, the knife is just going to swing out like that, and it's just going to swing at air, you know. Um, you never want to bring a knife in at you or stab this way. You always want to go that way and cut out. So take it like there. Again, the baseline of your knife, you're just going to follow that fat all the way down. It takes that whole fat cap right off of there. There's still a little bit right here. Take a small thin lane, bring that right off. Take the tip of your knife, go right up through. Take that there, take the base of your knife, come back on her. Take some of that off there. <laughs> What's up, bases? How you doing? Again, so these little parts of fat that are on here, you can just use the baseline of your knife, you know, the back, the bottom part of your knife, and you just kind of come right down and just kind of shave some of that fat off. And now you can see, when you look at the, the loin, I don't know how well the camera picks that up for you, but you can see this little line right here, kind of, you can kind of see right there. That's kind of where my knife chunked in and chunked in. So you can see the mark blades of my knife. Um, the really amazing professionals, man, and a really nice sharp knife and a slightly bigger one. I should have used my bigger one. Um, when you make nice big pulls, you see this smoothness right here? You can basically make the whole piece look like that, like one, like you just peeled it off so smooth. Um, that's one way you can tell an amateur butcher from a professional butcher is, um, yep, I'm calling myself an amateur butcher because I've worked in shops before, but, and if I spent another while you know if i was butchering again like constantly i'd be able to get it but you can see the marks where i make but it doesn't matter it's for your house it's for yourself when you're trying to sell it on a shelf and you're trying to th that's what they call it an art form that's why they they say it's an art form you know because uh it, it really is a skill and an art to like just work the meat so fluently to be able to not to have gouges chef knives with flex um i don't know I guess I don't really, I, I, I guess most of mine have always had kind of a flex. Um, yeah, I guess, I guess I don't really know the question or I haven't really had it much other way. So I guess, um, yeah, sorry. I, uh, um, I, uh, this knife here I have had for 12 years. I got this knife when I was 17. So this has been my main one. It doesn't really flex. So, I mean, I guess, like, it has that tiny bit, unless you're talking about, like, this one that can really get a flex. Um, but I like my nice hard knife here. I don't know. Depends on what you're doing. Oh, I should probably look at my onions. They're doing okay. I got them on low. They're cooking nice. They're ready for the meat, so let's cut that. So, again, keep your nut, uh, fingers curled in. Take the tip of the knife, and we're just going to pull back on it. We're cutting steak strips. And also, when you're cutting uh, cube steaks up for a stew... You see how the grain of this steak is moving all this way, right? Just like in wood and carpentry, this is all the grain line going this way, which means you want to cut against the grain like that, okay? That way, all the individual little fibers here all fall apart when you eat, right? And it all separates. Otherwise, if you cut it with the grain, you're going to end up in long strains and it's just going to be super tough because you have strains in the meat. What you're doing here is chopping it up. It's like if you have a stack of matches or a stack of sticks, you know, you, if you just take one stick and try and eat it long ways, it's just going to be tough to do it. But if you take the sticks and you chop them up into little pieces and hold them, they fall apart a lot better. Um, so it's very important to always cut against the grain when you're doing when you're doing stew meat when you're doing jerky you want jerky to be tough and you want it to pull so you want to cut with the grain um, so nice beef stroganoff on Sunday heck yeah Try to eat them both ways. <laughs> all right. So we got them all cut this way. And I'm just going to turn it to the side. I'm going to cut them into the cubes. Again, keep your knuckles curled in. And just pull back on the knife. 
I kind of do a little forward and then, then all the way back, just like a little and then through just to get my placement. Um, because, again, this isn't a sharp... If you have a super, super sharp knife, you can just pull back and not be hesitant about it. Because it's not the sharpest of sharpest, I do one little forward just to get my notch in there and then pull back on it, you know? Um, because if you just line up and pull it and you have a burr or something, you can end up yanking the meat and uh, it can be dangerous on you. You don't want that. So when your knife isn't... When, when your knife isn't like 100% razor blade sharp, give it that little notch before you pull back on it, you know? Give it a little, you know? Because if you try to pull back, well, it works. My knife is sharp enough, but yeah, see, it kind of grabs that bottom. You're not ready for it. I don't know. Maybe it's just a personal thing. Who knows? <laughs> All right, so now we're going to take this, throw it into our pan. Actually, I'm going to switch my camera for you so you can see the pan. All right, meat is in the pan. Wash my hands because we're dealing with raw beef. All right. Hang on one second. All right, sorry about that. <laughs> All right. Sorry about that. All right. My neighbor's being weird. All right. My dad unloaded some stuff in my yard, which is fine. Just hanging out. And my neighbor's like, hey, is that stuff free? Can I go grab that? Like, no, it's not free. You can't grab it. It's just, it's sitting there for a moment in the yard until he can grab, uh, he's probably just moving around. He's gra it looks like he's grabbing some of the summer stuff. It looks like he brought the inflatable raft out and a couple of things, getting taking it from the storage shed, bringing it into our shed by the house here. You know, swapping out some winter stuff. Hey, is that stuff free? Can I come grab it? Man, get out of here. Come on now. <laughs> trying to cook on the stream here. Come on. <laughs> no. um, yeah, man. Scavengers. The second you set something out, by the, out in the yard, man. Scavengers. They just want free stuff. Did you ever make gumbo? I have not actually made gumbo. I've had gumbo. I enjoy gumbo. And I will make gumbo one day on stream for sure. Um, I do enjoy gumbo. Alright, so let's see how we do this. This is going to get crazy. This is the crazy part. Here we go. So we're going to just sear that. Now that that's seared, we're going to add two cups of water. And we're going to add the water. And we're going to add our seasonings. Cups of water. Oh, get it just set. You never had gumbo before? Yeah, gumbo is delicious. Um, I've never made it before, and I really want to. So. Maybe we'll make it on stream one of these days here. Basically, anything new that I'm gonna make, like for dinner or anything, I just, I'm just streaming it now. Like, I don't, like, uh, like this for instance. I'm like, oh man, that sounds good. 
I'm gonna have to make some. I gotta stream it. You know, like, save it for stream. <laughs> Anything that I think is neat or interesting that's different that I haven't had, I'm saving it for this. And then some. Hang on one second. Okay, I guess he bought the rims. Okay, my dad showed up. Now they bought the rims. Okay. Sorry about that. <laughs> Alright. Is that money for free? <laughs> what money? I ain't got any money for free. What? <laughs> yeah, you... Well, my dad just showed up. Apparently, um, my dad found some rims for a car. And he had them out there. And apparently, uh... He just bought them from my dad out there. Alright, so we just dumped our seasoning mix in with the two cups of the water. Ooh, you can smell that coming off there. So good. Oh my god. Alright, so we got to turn that down to a low simmer. We're going to let this cook on low for an hour. Okay. So, which is fine because we got plenty of other stuff to do. Um, like making a frosting for our cookies that we're about to bake. <laughs> Oh, your dad made that jambalaya? Nice. I, uh, I made jambalaya before. It was a long time ago when I made it, but it was absolutely delicious. Um, jambalaya is awesome. So, um, next up here, we have, um, yeah, we've got to make the, the, the cream cheese dress, uh, frosting. Alright. Sorry, normally I'm, a, I'm alone when I'm here, and <laughs> lately there's people in and out, and so I keep getting distracted. So, sorry about that, guys. Um, Alright. So, that's going to sit. We're going to turn this down. We're just going to let that sit on low. We're going to get our timer here. Yeah, jambalaya is delicious. That's with, uh, did you make it with the, uh, or he make it with the shrimp and the kibasa and all that stuff? Um, that's the good stuff. Um, okay, that's on, just getting a time check here. Time check says 138, so close to an hour-ish. That's right, it's going to be as long as it takes for us to get this together, really. So, it'll take less than an hour. They always say an hour. It's never that long, you know. Basically, the idea is that it's on low simmer, and you're going to let the meat soften and tenderize. Um, so... Next up is to make the cream cheese. Or the frosting. But yes. So we got butter. We got cream cheese. I got an electric blender. And. Yeah. So you can make this with milk <coughs> and butter. Today we're making it with cream and butter. Cream cheese and butter. Uh, might need to heat it up just a little bit to get it all warm. So I'm going to take a plate here. Cream cheese looks like it's going to be soft enough, so we might not really need to heat it up. Maybe just... The butter, definitely going to need to heat it up. Can't remember? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I I want to make a jambalaya. I want to make a gumbo. Um, there's a lot of things I want to make. Um, so, And uh, other great news 
um, part of with this recipe and the other one, my mom sent me a lot of our old family, great-grandmother's family recipes and stuff like that. You know, recipes that are like 60 years old, 70 years old. And um, I'm really stoked to try out some of them. And uh, so, and I got some old cookbook magazines and stuff. And uh, so, yeah, we're going to, I got all kind of new ideas now. I want to get some farm fresh eggs and make like real milkshakes with raw eggs. Um, we're going to get all kind of crazy up in here, that's for sure. Alright. So if you are new to streaming or just joining us, we're here every week, every Monday night, and then other days through the week. I have a new job, so it's been a little fishy, but we're trying to get a maintain regular. So I'm going to put a whole half thing of butter in there. I have a website. It's fun. Except my button doesn't link to it. <laughs> All right. Ooh. Uh-oh. Something's not connecting anymore. Did it finally burn itself out? Oh, it's the actual whisk. Oh, see, that part's separated. So it's not getting a full lock anymore. That could be problematic. Hmm. I might have to believe that. All right. That's okay. Guess we're doing it by hand. Okay. I'm going to heat it up a little bit more then. Because it's really hard. I thought I was going to have the power of electronics to help me, but apparently I'm not. So, I've had that thing for like five years, six years, so, and it's definitely put in some work, so I'm, I'm not disappointed it failed, because I'm actually impressed that it's taken this long, so, <laughs> and it didn't even, it's just the blending piece, so I can, I can probably glue it, not probably, I will, oh yeah, it's cooking good. Once that's ready, what we're going to do is we'll pull all the meat out of it. We're going to cook some stuff in a separate pan, the carrots and whatnot. We're going to add it. We're going to add rice. It's going to be sweet, guys. Oh, while wow, that's nuking and warming. Oh, well, it's probably done now. Um, something I wanted to show you guys, as I have been showing you throughout the weeks. Check these guys out. Oh, I'm on the wrong camera. You guys could have yelled at me. <laughs> so check these guys out. So this is my celery, and it is growing fantastically well. Some of this nastiness here. Some of that's rotting off there. Take some of that rotting out. Where'd my towel? All right. You can see the stalk of celery, after you cut the celery, it's growing itself back, All right? Another month or so, that'll be ready to plant in the garden. Threw a couple of garlic cloves in here. They're starting to sprout and grow nicely. And I cut some onion, and now the onion is growing from the onions we cut. The rest of these aren't taken, so... Oh, that one is. So we're going to throw that out. Refresh with some water. Put some fresh water in there for it. But yeah. I have a big garden out front that I'm working on this year. And uh, those are going to go in it. All right. See if we can get this mixed up. Whoa, we're splashing stuff everywhere. I think I messed this up. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, there we go. Now it's softer. It's working. Trying to.
Yep, it was a failure trying the uh, trying the um, cream cheese one. We might have to just switch to doing it with milk because I don't think I'm doing this right. Again, not a baker. I'm a cook. I'm not a baker. This is just a cool recipe we're trying. This is a hundred year old cake uh, cookie recipe. And this is just a basic cream cheese whipped cream I'm trying to make for the top. Cream cheese icing. Yeah, <clears throat> potatoes are good for that. Um, nice. Yeah, if, if you buy a potato, you can take a potato and like cut it into little square cubes and like make like 10 chunks out of it or something. And you can turn one potato into uh, many. Um, you're going to learn that when you move to Idaho. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, it uh, potatoes like cool, dark, um, humid area. Uh, and um, as long as you have them in a nice dark spot. Because like, think about it, they don't need the light to grow. Because they're planted underground, right? So because they're underground... Um, you know, it's not like it needs light to start growing. It just needs to have the right moisture in the air. And it happens. They start growing. They take off. Yeah, it's really cool. Hmm. Almost. Almost. Just add the powdered sugar and keep whipping it until it's the consistency and the flavor that you want. And mm, that's starting to taste good. And taste that cream cheese in there. A little more powdered sugar. Basically, you're using the powdered sugar like you would um, flour making a dough. You're using the powdered sugar to both sweeten and thicken. Let's try now. Mm. Almost wondering if I went it there's a tad much more cream cheese than there needs to be, or if it needs more butter. I think we're right on. I'll probably make another one with the milk too, just to because that doesn't look like it's gonna be enough anyway, so scoop this out, put it in a separate bowl, put it in the fridge. Where'd my spatula go? Oh, there it is. I heard a saw. What's going on outside? Ooh, they're cutting stuff. <laughs> Dad's on another project again. He likes to build stuff. Super cool. Alright. Alright. Spatula cleaned. Let's put this into a bowl. <laughs> See? Tell me that don't look just like icing, right? Icing. Amazing. Oh, I gotta go find my camera real quick, because I gotta take some pictures of this stuff. Because I always forget to take pictures while I'm doing it. I always take pictures after everything's done, and I don't have any pictures of anything of my stuff's in between. Although, I'm sure it's all on video. I don't know really how to take a uh, picture off of my video, but... Ooh, forgot cast iron lids get hot. <laughs> Oh, excuse me, I can smell that coriander, or that cardamom. Oh, it's so good. Okay, so we're going to put this in the fridge, off to the side. Alright. 
Let's make a cream one. I'm gonna rinse this out. And make a whipped cream even milk. Yeah, I can smell that cardamom cooking off over here. It smells so good. <laughs> All right. Got it. Got my measuring cup back because we're gonna do we're gonna mix a cup of milk. Good job. Good job. All right. <laughs> Where did I put my towel? Where did I put my towel? I'm so lost. Okay, cup of milk. Throw some more of this butter. Half a cup of butter. Throw this in the mic for a moment just to get it softened. Chef Mike, as he prefers to be called. Because um, he cooks more food than some chefs. <laughs> Shots fired. Um, no. <laughs> no, I've worked in a lot of kitchens where guys will call themselves chefs and they run the kitchen. And they don't do a damn thing. They are the laziest people that don't do anything. Um, and then they make their sous chef do everything. I've worked at a couple kitchens like that before. That's why I kind of jokingly said that. <laughs> some some guys they think once they become chef it means they don't have to uh, they don't have to work anymore, you know. And it's like no, you're chef. That means you got to work twice as hard, homie. <laughs> That's why you're chef. Another moment on that. Got my powdered sugar right here. Powdered sugar everywhere. All right, pour the butter in there. Splash it around all over the place, make a mess. Make sure you do that, it's important. And the butter just hardens right back up. I don't understand how this is supposed to work. This is stupid. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> this is why I'm not a baker. <laughs> Maybe I should have heated the milk with it. But then it's supposed to thicken and cool and... I, yeah, I don't know. Maybe I just need to make all of it. Fine, I'll warm the milk too. <laughs> All right. Ah, oh, that coriander smells amazing. Forget, the lid's hot. Stop doing that. <laughs> or cardamom, coriander. Ah, oh, why do I keep confusing the two? It's like when I was mixing up the geese and the goose, or the geese and the uh, duck. Checking something real fast. Oh, my camera froze up. Oh, no, it didn't. No, it didn't. I'm sorry. 
I was looking at the wrong thing over here. Okay. Um. Sorry, just one moment to adjust something real quick. Sorry about that. I had to get one thing back here. Cool. That's alright. We need some stuff to cook. And... Okay. Alright. That was warm. Set. This is not working the way I had intended it to. The cream cheese worked out better, but let's go with a tad bit longer on that. move our electric blender out of the way because apparently it's a fail and it broke well not broke but the thing don't work no more I guess it's broke <laughs> um, it has another attachment too it has a blender that goes underneath that I use for um, sauces and stuff so it still has its purposes buddy all right there we go melted warmed there a little powdered sugar in her Buddy boy. Hang on one second. What is it? So we're mixing that. Put, woo. So we're just going to keep adding the powdered sugar until it gets thick. Basically, like I said before, we're using the powdered sugar just like you would flour to make a batter. But what I think I'm realizing is something fell. Either... I don't know. I did something wrong with this part, but we're going to figure it out. I think it just needs more flour, really, or powdered sugar. Um... Just keep adding we're just gonna keep adding powdered sugar until it gets as thick as it can. taking quite a bit of powdered sugar. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't have gone with the whole cup of milk. <laughs> Maybe part of it it's going to need to uh, chill. Yep. It tastes right. Maybe it just needs to chill a bit. Let's try that. We can always come back and add more. But it's definitely tasting sweet. So put you in the fridge and you can cool down, harden up, congeal up. Move our powdered sugar out of the way. This next up was we gotta roll these cookies out. Okay. Oh, such a mess. <laughs> Guys, I make the biggest messes streaming, I'm not even gonna lie. Just huge mess. Need some water. All right. Next. 
next up, like this, pull these. I almost kind of want to just lay the dough out right on the table. Um, the only part that bothers me is this crease right in the middle of the table here. Um, but if I kind of roll out more in this section, I, uh, I don't know, because I don't, like, my cutting board is super small, and, well, not super small, but I mean, for what I'm trying to do with this, my cutting board is small, so, let's see, let's pull our dough out, see what we're working with. Oh, I see why. Okay, so by refrigerating it, it helps stiffen it a lot. That's nice. That'll help for rolling it and cutting it in a big way. And you know what? Yeah. We're going to go right on the table. So for starters... Oh, that's my measuring cup. I'm going to throw some flour right on the table. This way, it will not stick as much. Then, I have my rolling pin. Nice big heavy duty marble rolling pin. Alright. Got a nice big handful of this dough here. Get flour on it. You use the flour to help us roll, spread it out without it sticking. Might even want to take some of that off of there. Look at that. Rolls really nice. Um, again, I'm not sure if I'm missing something or if it's just supposed to be that awesome or what. I mean, the last time I made this recipe. <laughs> I was like probably 12 years old with my mom, so. All right. Now, I need a way to cut cookies. Let's use a pint glass. That'll make a nice size cookie. I gotta get some cookie cutters. Also, I need to get a pan to Ready to put the cookies on. Baking sheet. Got two in here. Got some baking spray. Yeah, these pans and trays are old and beat up, so don't mind the colorness of them. And the beat upness. That's what happens when you use trays a lot. <laughs> these things are old. Alright. So that looks like a cookie. I'm wondering if I need to thicken them up more. Let's see here. And more flour. Roll so dough does not stick. Roll out quarter. Cut with cookie cutters. Place on an ungreased or used parchment paper. On oh, ungreased. Well, I greased them. Um, wonder if that makes a big difference or not. Curious. We're going to find out. <laughs> they only take like 8 to 10 minutes to bake. So we'll be able to bake a whole bunch of these. Whoa. Flour helps it from sticking. That's big key. <laughs> it's very key. I might have started with too much flour on the table. <laughs> kind of went overboard on it. All right. <laughs> Made music in your kitchen? Heck yeah, like clacking tongs and 
banging things together. There's a local band around here called the Kitchen Dwellers. Um, they don't use kitchen instruments, but they all work in kitchens, and so they all play music together, and uh, they're pretty cool. They play with these guys, uh, the Cure for the Common, the music that you hear in the background. I'm just curious why they're so, so soft. I feel like they're almost too soft, like they shouldn't be that soft, like because they're falling, I can't even pick it up without it falling apart. That's why I feel like I'm doing something wrong. Maybe I need to work the dough a little more, I don't know. But then it said not to work it too much, you don't want to work it too much, so I mean, but you got to work it a little bit, I guess, I don't know, let's see. Yeah, see, as I work it, they get a little stiffer and, and uh, seem to hold on a little better there, so I don't know. We got enough to try a bunch of different ways, so we'll find out. So that tray is super soft. This tray is going to be the extra old one. We'll be able to tell a big difference. Oh, nice! Make, like, some DJ tracks with that, man. That'd be pretty cool. All right, roll it out there. See, these are holding together better so than those. So, I'm curious if that's just working it more. But I'm curious. It will. I know it will. I don't know how much. So I'm curious how much of a difference it will make in the final product when it's baked. So we'll find out. You could probably make a YouTube video making kitchen sounds and music like that and make some, you know, get monetized and make some money on that, you know. <laughs> make a viral video making kitchen music. All right. I think we're ready for our first bake. Uh, let me throw this one more time here. Alright, throwing these guys into the oven, see what happens. Timer. <laughs> All right. So those are in the oven, baking away. Um, let's get a time check. See how long our uh, our beef is working there. So got about a half hour left, give or take, left on uh, that simmering in there. But let's check here now, see where we're at. <coughs> oh, yeah, give it a nice. Oh, sorry, let me switch the camera for you. Yeah, look at that. Mm. Just gotta let it keep cooking for that meat to tender up. So, on the side, one of the things we need to do Yeah, that would be awesome. Um, 
Yeah, uh, I don't have anything that will block you from sending links, so you can go ahead and post the link in chat to your YouTube channel or whatever if you'd like. I would definitely be interested in loading that up. Um, yeah, if you wouldn't mind, I could even use it like if, if you hear the music in the background that's playing. Um, that's a local band here in town named Cure for the Common. And um, yeah, I don't know how to make sound clips for alerts and stuff yet. I'm working on that, and I gotta talk to some friends. So I would, I would definitely like to use something like that as a sound clip. That would be super, super cool. Um, yeah, I'd really appreciate that. So I'm gonna start in the other pan here. Um, we are gonna do the the remainder for our beef here. What we need to do to start is this one is going to be we're just going to be a, carrots and sugar and oil basically and raisins and then the meat will get added afterwards we'll cook the rice in here and then we'll add it all together so um so we'll take our oil quarter cup Are you a streamer as well? Do you stream making music or anything like that? Or do you, uh, that's just something that you did on your own time on for fun? Or um, Does it say how many carrots? Two large carrots. Let's see, so we're at, this is 10 ounces. It's about two large carrots worth. Might want that to get a little bit warmer. Yeah. If it all heat the same, it's okay. We've come too far. Okay. First set of cookies are in there. I don't think I have any other tray. What I can do though is I have this other thing. I can cut some out and get it set up on this and ready. Man, I made a mess of this spot, that's for sure. Alright. Throw some more dough down. Some more flour. Although I think I have too much anyways. Push this off to the side. There we go. Work the dough just a little bit. Camera change. Oh, nice sound engine. Oh, sweet. Heck yeah. Might have to ask you one day and to help me figure out how to put those sound effects to there <laughs> to the Twitch thing. Um, yeah, I will. Uh, I will check that out after stream. Like I said, my computer is not very good for me to. Um, try and load up other stuff but we can try it at the end of stream that way if it crashes at least we're at the end and it's no big deal <laughs> but I will definitely check it out all right so I got this bacon sheet here I'm just gonna use it to stack some more of these on So when these come out, man, I think it does just need to be firmer, just just for cutting purposes, dang. Um, so some of you guys do not live in the States, and I don't know how to ship overseas yet. Um, I might, I, well, I will ask that when I go down to 
the post office next time. But if you see on the thing, I have mentioned that there's. I'm going to try and give away these cookies today. And I want to do that. One of the things was whoever was the hundred, whoever will be the hundredth follower, because if you see, I got, I think we got 95 followers. So whoever's the hundredth follower will get a free dozen of these cookies sent to them, just for being our 100th guest. And I have that thing that does a rolling thing to see who wins cookies or whatever. Um, I can use that. Or depending on how many people are here, I can write on a piece of paper a number and let you guys guess a number one through whatever and see who hits the closest and do it that way. Or if it's just a handful of you here, I might just give it to the handful, give each one of you who are here one just because there's only a handful here and to say hi, you know, and thanks for thanks for hanging out. Um, I'm cool with that. We're, gonna, we're definitely going to give them away and figure something out. Um, you know. Ooh, wow. Those cooked quick. Oh, you know what? That's part of that oiling, that greet, the... Yeah, you know, we're not supposed to oil the pan, and I just learned why. Because they started sizzling and cooking the bottoms of them. Because there's so much oil inside the cookies, and then the oil's on the spray, I think what happened is it started sautéing on the bottom there, or started cooking on the bottom too much. That's okay. We got it worked out. You hear some familiar sounds. Nice. I'm excited. Alright. Here's the first batch. Let's take these guys off here onto a cold plate. And there's the timer. We checked that perfectly. Alright. So here's the first... What I need to do is get some kitchen mitts, guys. I don't know why I haven't gotten myself some good oven mitts yet. I have this thing, but I use it as a rag, and then it ends up just getting wet. And I, I need to get some. I go to the store, and it's like five bucks, and it's like, you guys are out of your mind for a piece of cloth? Like, come on. So, here we go. Here's the difference. You can totally see. Oh, I don't have the camera for you guys. I'm sorry. But, oh, I'm a failure. So, here's the difference in the cookie you can see here. These ones were those super soft ones. You see how flattened out? These ones were the ones we worked a little bit more. So you can see how they held more of a cookie shape than those ones. So they do need to be worked. Um, but I guess not too much. <laughs> so, um, I don't know why not too much. We're going to learn. And also, let me switch the camera for you guys. So... Bottoms are almost, but they're nice and brown. Yeah, I think I think working it was definitely the way to go. These are almost like a pancake, really. Oh, it's so good, guys! Oh my gosh! Mm, look at this little plate cookie here. Okay, nice and golden brown on the bottom. All right. It'll be less brown if we don't use the spray. See, that one got a little bit darker. But, guys, I can't even split that. Oh, crap. So <laughs> one of... One of those trays I used to help hold my um, beef jerky on that I made on stream. And even though I cleaned the hell out of that pan... That one cookie had a small hint of flavor of the beef jerky in the background. That's kind of funny. Guys, that cookie is so good. And I want to send you guys some. I do. I really do. So, right, let's put a little bit of this frosting on top. That cream cheese one. Oh, just like Mom used to make them when I was a kid for Christmas. And... Oh, that flavor and that taste brings me right back to being a kid again. Oh, Lord. All right, so I'm going to redo these ones because they definitely need to be worked. Now that I learned that. Guys, the cookies are so good. 
Can you tell I'm happy and stoked? Because that's really awesome. <laughs> Guys, I can bake! How about that? <laughs> Alright. I grabbed a big towel because it's dry and I need something that's dry to grab stuff with. So these smaller cookies are these ones that were softened and flattened to put on the side too. But these ones aren't quite where we were at. But So, I'm going to clean these trays off. You know I'm out of my mind. So, like I said, I had a, just the faintest hit, hint of barbecue. I washed these things, like, that was weeks ago, and I've used these many a time since. It's funny that even the pans hold that flavor so well. Put your carrots. <laughs> how uh how do you ship internationally? Like do you like is there a specific thing with food or anything in general or like it's probably obviously a lot extra expensive. Um I don't I've never sent anything outside of the United States, so I have no idea how you uh I don't even know what an address looks like outside of the United States to even mail to let alone like but you know, I'd be willing to learn and try. Um I could talk to the post office or Maybe I'll send you a message later on and we can figure it out, you know, but. Alright, so I got the two trays cleaned up. And I'm going to put these, all oh, these awesome, awesome cookies. I'm going to set these off to the side. I don't have any room! Um, okay. Alright. Hey, what's up, Nas? How you doing? I am pretending I'm a baker today. I have a cookie recipe from my great-great-grandfather's bakery from the early 1900s. It's like a 100-year-old cookie recipe. And uh, my mom made it all the time as a kid. And so we've been recreating it today, and it's awesome. Peanut butter cookies. Oh, I could probably just throw a spoonful of peanut butter in the mix, and it'd probably be okay. I love peanut butter cookies. Um, and then also, Nas, we're working on. Um, oh no, my element came out. We're working on a a, a beef dish here. It's a uh, Afghanistan Kabuli Paleo beef and rice mix. Yeah, you can definitely try the cookie recipe. I um, I have just the ingredients listed up. I will have the actual recipe recipe, um, all the measurements and step-by-step -step and everything on my website, thedudesfoods.com. Um, I will have it on there after stream today. And uh, But yeah, you are more than, willing, uh, more than welcome to uh, go ahead and try it out. Um, it's... And it's so good. So you're a baker. It uses um, it uses sour milk. You know where you put a teaspoon of uh, vinegar into a cup of milk. I've never done anything like that before, so it was it was crazy. Um, yeah, I can definitely Skype it to you or um, something. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll get a hold of you after stream for sure. Um. So, the next thing that goes into these carrots is we got to put a, I think it's a teaspoon, yeah, a teaspoon of sugar. So, we're going to throw a teaspoon of sugar with these carrots here. So, in the, 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 the dinner dish that I'm cooking, <laughs> yeah, I've never, I've never heard of the sour milk done like that, so that was fun. Um, and then I made a cream cheese icing. And I made a... What else did we make? 
a uh, oh a milk icing didn't quite come out right the milk one yet I failed that one pretty bad um, but, uh, yeah and so the dish that I'm cooking this dinner dish here is um it's an Afghanistan Kabali what's it called Afghanistan Kabali uh, uh, Kabali Paleo, and it's my brother's recipe that he gave me. He's in the Air Force, and he's been to Afghanistan, and he's worked with Afghanistan teachers, and this is an authentic dish recipe that they gave to him, or that he learned from them, and all their foods are awesome, so I wanted to stream it today. Oh, you use that, that a lot? <laughs> um, so, there is a difference then between, uh, question then, there is a difference between buttermilk and sour milk. I was reading recipes online and they were basically both kind of calling them the same thing. Like you could use them the same, but then others were saying, eh, you kind of want to use one for what it says and the other for what it says. Again, I'm not a baker, so I don't know the, I don't know the answer. Um, but, so I figured I'd ask you, but, <laughs> um, But I assume there is a difference between just straight buttermilk and sour milk. Um, yeah, that's really cool though. I never never used it. But yeah, I'd be happy to send you this recipe. It's um it's really fantastic. Oh what what am I doing here? Switch my cameras, come on. Oh, repeat the question. The question was, um, buttermilk and sour milk some recipes say to use buttermilk some say to use sour milk I was looking on Google the difference between the two some people said it doesn't matter if you substitute one for the other some said it does um, like I said I'm not a baker I don't know either way um, guys if you like baking streams and, and other other cooking streams um Nos here is also a baker cooking stream she is a professional baker um, you have like multiple degrees in baking and cooking or something like that too don't you um, so, that's why I was asking her about the, the baking, because she definitely knows her stuff. <laughs> I know how to cook. I don't know how to bake. I just like to have fun. <laughs> I'm going to roll that out. So, I'm going to use this. We're going to cut our, uh, oh, dog's kicking at the door. He wants in and out, in and out, all day long, I swear. Come on, buddy. Yeah, these are a little bit firmer. They cooked a lot nicer when they were firmer. This dish also, um, so as we learned on the first batch we baked off, the, the recipe says not to spray the pan. And, well, I sprayed the pan because I didn't get that far in the recipe first. <laughs> and uh, I learned why. It really, it really um, crisped and cooked the bottom of the cookie more than it should have. So we learned something. And we're going to apply what we learned to this time and not use spray. <laughs> this is great for baking. Oh, for baking substitute? Nice. I'll have to check that out. Thank you. I'll have to check that out. One of the reasons why I'm not a baker is because of all the exact measurements. And one of the things I really enjoy about this recipe, and I'm sure you've probably come across recipes like this in the past, but it says use two heaping teaspoons of baking powder. One heaping teaspoon of baking soda. Not a level, but a heaping one. Um, I, I, I don't know baking fully, but I remember something of the fact that you always wanted it to be a level measurement so the fact that they're heaping measurements um, is a little bit different for baking right I don't know <laughs> hey East Ohio what's up I probably pronounced that wrong exact measures what are those how you doing East thanks for dropping by stream good to see ya 
So we got a couple things going on. We're making cookies. We're making a uh, making Afghanistan dinner beef rice dish. Uh, we got all kind of stuff going on. All right, we get get these couple more here. Am I open to I oh not oh hey not oh, <laughs> that's for not all right <laughs> heck yeah can't wait to see the deliciousness all right so let's get these guys into the oven see what we can do with this so. Those are in. Let's set our timer for nine minutes. That's what we had it on last time. That was a perfect amount of time. Wash your hands. All right. So we're gonna leave our flour mess sit over here. We're gonna switch over to here for a moment. All right. Oh, here's my thing right here. All right, there we are. Whoa, timber. All right, next up, we're going to remove the meat from the sauce. <clears throat> or from the, the juice, if you will. Should be getting pretty tender. Mm -hmm. Getting soft. Right about where we want. So, um... Mm, that's really good. Sorry. Okay. Stop eating all the food and focus. Gotcha. <laughs> um, we're gonna remove the meat, right? So we're gonna remove the meat. We're going to add two cups of rice, <clears throat> and we're going to add more water, a little more salt, and we're going to cook the rice inside of these juices. So instead of, like, boiling your rice in just plain water, we're going to boil the rice and cook the rice in all this awesome seasoning and beef and onions and everything that we made the meat in. Um, so everything that just has this meaty flavor is going to go, and the rice is just going to soak all of it up. Um, so if you had just joined us, what we added to this, <clears throat> what this was, we sautéed onions in some oil, we added stew beef, we cooked that down, then we added two cups of water, we added a, a teaspoon and a half of cinnamon, ground cumin, and ground cardamom. <clears throat> we proceeded to let this cook with all the oil and the... Um, and the onions and everything, we proceeded to let this cook for the last almost hour now. And now we're removing the meat, leaving the sauce there. We're taking our measuring cup and we're going to put two cups of rice in this bad boy. Yeah, Cybernetti, she is an amazing baker, so... If you have bacon questions, that, that would be your person. <laughs> Alright, so there's one cup. Two cups. So this recipe calls for either long grain rice or, and this is the part that kind of disturbed me, either long grain rice or you could use um, basmati rice. The problem is, two pounds of long grain rice is $1.70. Um, one pound of basmati rice is, uh, almost six bucks. So, <laughs> I don't know the di I look I held the two bags together and looked at them. <laughs> it looked like rice. Uh, maybe one day I'll try the basmati. But for an extra three dollars, I didn't think it was going to be worth it. So I just, I, I went with regular rice. It's okay. Oh, we had the rice. We had a teaspoon and a half of salt. Mmm, meat juice. You know it. I don't know.
know what that is, Cybernethy, but Nos, if you can make it and send me some, that would be amazing. <laughs> um, I don't know. It just sounds good. It's, it's all fancy named and stuff, and so it just sounds good. And then you want to add the water so that it's about two inches above the line of the uh, rice. And then I believe... Yeah, you want to bring it to we're going to bring it to a boil. And we're just going to cook it until the rice soaks everything up. Sounds simple enough. If I can Oh, I got to fix this darn thing. So frustrating. All right. A little bit extra water in there. So it's like 2 inches over cuz rice soaks up moisture like nobody's business. Put the lid back on crank the heat up a bit so it boils. We got our carrots cooking over here. Now, this is carrots and sugar and vegetable oil. Next, we're going to add four ounces of seedless raisins. I bought the little one ounce boxes because the one ounce boxes was cheaper than a big bag. I could buy six one ounce boxes for two bucks, or I could buy an eight ounce bag for like four and change. I was like, are you guys high? Like, that's, that's a little... <laughs> so, yeah, so I bought individual boxes, and they're pre-measured, so I don't even have to measure. So, I mean, you know, convenient. <laughs> Google it, dudes. It looks amazing. I will. I will. Um, Cybernethy gave me a suggestion, Nos, on a uh, Bosnian-type dish, and I Googled it, and it looked amazing, and I now am going to stream it soon. <laughs> Because it looks fantastic. Um, Cybernethy is over in England in that area, and so he's got some cool ideas of food over there. So we've had a great time talking about some different styles of food and stuff like that. Alright, so we got four ounces of raisins. We're going to cook the raisins <coughs> in with the carrots until they all plump together. And then we'll add the beef. We'll set aside until our rice is done. Once the rice is done, we'll combine it all together, and it will be glorious. <laughs> East. <laughs> Imagine there is an eject button on the stove which bounces the pot out into the air. I guess. Um. That would be dangerous? Wouldn't the pot come flying at me with a bunch of burning stuff and burn me? I don't know if I want to imagine that world. <laughs> <clears throat> Alright, we're cooking good now, guys. We're cooking good now. Cookies are doing beautifully. So, Nas, here's our first set of cookies. That came out. This cookie here, this these couple here were a little bit flattened. I didn't have the dough worked enough. I was trying different styles of the dough to see. So these ones got super flat on me. As the dough got worked more and I cut more cookies, they got this nice solid shape. I put them all in at the same exact size. So um, that's how they turned out. So I think working the dough a little bit helps. And they come out like that. They're almost cake-like. You know, it's almost cakey. And, um, I mean, they come apart, they're nice and flaky, they're super soft, super moist. <clears throat> and again, guys, I'm going to give these cookies away. I want to send you guys some. So, I'm going to try and do something. Wrap away. And... Um... Whoever's the 100th follower is going to get a free pack of cookies. Um, but we haven't made it there yet. But that person will be a lucky follower. And the rest of you will get to play the game for some, too. And, yeah, we're going we're gonna to hook it up with some cookies today. Mm. Okay. Need some water.
fantastic. Thank you so much. All right. That's our buzzer. Much better without spraying the pan. So these, the first time I sprayed the pan, and apparently I was not supposed to do that, and we definitely learned why. Um, so, ejectocito. <laughs> All right, look at these babies. You know it. All right, I'm gonna clean this spat. All right, get another plate out here. Such amazing cookies! Oh no, I'm on the wrong. Ch what? There we go. I'm really bad at this camera switch up, guys. Sorry. Look at all these awesome cookies! Oh my gosh! I have no room over here, guys. I'm sorry. I got no room to set stuff, cook stuff. Like, <laughs> so I'm like trying to figure out what's the best way to set this, put this here, set that there. All right, there we go. Mmm, cookies everywhere. Oh, I know what I can. Why don't, yeah, okay. I'm going to use that next time. Okay. So let's go make up some more. Heck yeah, we're going to give some of these cookies away, man. We made a frosting for them, too. We're going to have a giveaway here at the end of stream. going to hook you guys up. Alright, that's looking good. Um... According to the recipe, we could add this now, right? Sit in the skillet, we do the carrots with sugar and oil, cook them until they're brown, we add the raisins, we cook until they swell up, and then we add the meat, and put all of it with the rice. So, those are nice and brown. They're still cooking low, they're not, yeah, we can let them keep going a minute. The top. Yeah! Uh huh. Yeah. All right, let's make up some more cookies, huh? Yeah, cookie giveaway today, guys. When the weather gets warmer this summer, I want to do beef jerky giveaways. It's been I did jerky on stream a couple weeks ago. Um, it's chilly out, so it's it's really hard to do it right, and it's. I have a lot more fun making jerky when I can hang out outside in the sunshine and not just run outside, freeze real quick, and run back in the house. <laughs> so, as the weather gets a little better, we will uh, we will happily get back into some more jerky. I will throw a little more flour on the table here. All right, we're gonna get our dough. Get some flour on my hands to grab the dough. All right, pack this flour in real nice. Kind of just fold it in and work it on itself. Get it worked real nice. Not too much though. I don't know how much is too much. I don't know what it means by too much. Not enough. I don't know. But basically, 
enough, I guess. <laughs> if you're a baker, I imagine you're pretty much on point with what's enough and not. You just kind of know where to roll it and where not. You just kind of feel it in texture. Like, I'm noticing as I'm working this dough more, you can feel the texture in your hands change. Um, you guys can probably see it on the camera. The texture slightly change as well. So, I'm sure as a baker, you guys probably uh, have all of this down to feel and look and can totally tell what's up. I can't. <laughs> um, Alright, got our sheet trays. Let's cut some cookies. I can fit three across. All right. I am located in Montana. I am in the beautiful state of Montana, about an hour and a half outside of Yellowstone National Park, and it is beautiful. How about yourself, East? Where are you located? Somewhere out east? <laughs> east Oahu? Could East Oahu be, uh, is that Hawaii maybe? I don't know. I shouldn't even guess because I'll probably just look stupid. <laughs> Uh, Alright, this is done. I'm going to take the carrots off. Those are done. Let me switch the camera up real quick for you. Just so you can see this part. I'm just going to add the meat to the carrots. This whole mixture will get mixed with our rice. So I turn the heat off on that. It's now just sitting. Hawaii. Yeah, I was right. Right on. <laughs> hungry and bored. Oh, no, Nas. Usually when I'm hungry and bored, if you're a bag of Doritos or anything sugary, you better hide because I'm going to come for you. And I'm going to come for your whole family. I'm going to take all of it out because I'm bored and I'm hungry. <laughs> um, cool. I'm glad I got that right with Hawaii. I, that oh, oh, he sounded super familiar. Like I saw it somewhere. And uh, cool. Glad I don't look like a dummy. <laughs> You guys probably get some sweet Hawaiian food out there, huh? You got a lot of fresh food, a lot of fresh seafood, obviously. Um, so is it true in Hawaii that spam is like a big deal? I don't mean to sound like an A, but a lot of people in the States here all, uh, told me a lot about you guys out in Hawaii. Like, spam is a big thing in Hawaii? Is this true? Or is this just like inlanders just talking smack and being dumb? El Procrastinator, what up? How are you doing today? Heck yeah. The cumin, the the cardamom the cardamom is what kind of made me upset a little bit because the cardamom it is not cheap compared to the other spices on the rack I was I was really impressed at the price of the cardamom but worth it it was so good so it's cooking right here let me show you we ain't done with it yet um, we're making two things as you can see cookies and this so that's the rice cook oh look at that boiling so nice 
Let me set that for one second. I got. Uh, let me pull that off to stir it real quick. We don't want to overcook. Oh shoot! Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Let's not burn it. Holy crap! Whoa! Didn't see that coming, boys. We didn't burn it, but saved. Ooh, now we're burning ourselves though. Cause I gotta fix my damn thing here. Come on. <laughs> All right. We're not burnt. We're just a little bit crisp on the bottom. We're good. We're good. We got it just in time. Saved. All right. A little crispy rice. We're good. We're good. Ooh, that was a close one, guys. Almost lost her. That's why you always check your rice when it's cooking. We had it turned up a little too high, I think, is the problem. Let's taste this rice real quick. Mmm. That's incredibly good. Like, really. That's right about where we want it. Could be cooked a little bit more, but I'm going to say it's good. Um... I'm going to shut the heat off for a second. Keep that to the side. First, I'm going to get these cookies in the oven. So they're out of the way. <laughs> um, put that. All right. In the oven. Timer. Nine minutes. Let's do this. So we got our big Dutch oven still here. Got our rice looking good in it. Mixed up. We're going to put our, come on, it's sitting there nice, be nice, there we go. So I'm going to take our pan of the meat and the carrots here, I'm pour this, inside. this looks so good guys, I can't even begin to describe. We're just going to mix it all together real nice like. Let me get you a better camera on that. Sorry, guys. Oh, man. This looks super good. There it is. And this is going to go in the oven for a short amount of time. Oh, man. It's different and delicious. I think, I think it's missing a little more salt and pepper is what I would add to it. But otherwise, that's right on point. Next up is I gotta clean this mess. <laughs> that way we have a place to put our food when it's done. Um, so let's just give it a moment here and we'll just pull all this off to the side. We'll clean up the party. Basically, take your big mixing bowl, any dishes you have around, just throw it all into it. And let's see. Okay. Anytime you're working with dough. You always want to get it under water and soaking because otherwise you just turn into glue and that sucks. Alright, give me just a moment here to wash a couple things we're going to need, wipe a couple things down.
see, if this was a TV cooking show, we would cut the cameras, re-clean everything, do everything all real nice again, and turn the cameras back on and do it all, and then we'd have a nice recorded video, and you'd be none the wiser. But this is live, baby. So we got to do dishes sometimes. Set that to the side. Take a rolling pin out of here. Um, spatula here. Having a nice scraper or spatula or something to be able to scrape the table is really nice to have. Saves a lot of scrubbing. garbage can here. A bench scraper. Huh. Let's go for a bench. I don't know what those are, but might need one. Yeah, this is just my nice big spatula I've used in kitchens on the flat tops and stuff. It has the holes and stuff, so when you do eggs, the oils and stuff will drip right through. And uh, But it also works great as a scraper. Beautiful. Um, let's see. Let me go check the time real quick. I'm just curious how long we've been doing this today. Oh wow, almost 3 o'clock. So let's see, we started about around 12.30ish, so we've been going on for almost two and a half hours, that's good. Heck yeah. Unless my uh, alert thing's not wor working, which I think it is, I don't know. Um, yeah. Uh, the hundredth follower will get a uh, free pack of cookies, but uh, if that ever happens, unless it did happen and I just my alert is not working, but I don't, I don't think that's the case, which is fine. That's just more for the rest of you guys. Look at that, we got a clean table again. I will look that up after stream, that is for sure. I, uh, as I stated before, I can't really look stuff up while I'm streaming without risking crashing OBS because my internet connection is, well, let's just say I live in Montana and whatever you assume internet connection is like in Montana, you're most likely correct. Um, <laughs> and that's why. So, <laughs> all right, these cookies should just be about ready, and then we can get that into the oven. Yeah. So, do you have to pay for X Split? I know. I think it gives you what three things for free, like three scenes free, and then you can pay for more. And uh, I've been wanting to look into that. Um, I I learned how to use OBS, and I spent a lot of time getting it to work. So I just haven't had the available extra time to sit down and work XSplit instead. But I think I really need to do that. And I will. Oh, guys, these are so good. Oh. So good. You know, the one thing I probably could have done to make them just a little bit better is... um sprinkle just a little bit of sugar on them right before they go into the oven. I think if I did that, then they'd be everything.
word. I will do that. Um, Skype doesn't always work for me. I'll try and get it set up. I'll try and, yeah, see what we can come up with. But yeah, I would definitely like to uh, see what's up. Thanks, Nas. I appreciate it. All right. These cookies looking good. I got 20 seconds. They are pretty much done. We can probably let them go. Nah, I'll call that done. Look at all these cookies, guys. Look at all these cookies. Cookies everywhere. Oh, my God. Good thing I'm giving these away because I wouldn't know what I'd do with all these cookies. Get diabetes or something. I don't know. Alright, so now we're going to set the oven to 300. We're going to turn it down by 50. We're going to put this in here. So yeah, if you were wondering, we baked the cookies at 350 for 9 minutes. Alright. So we learned a couple things about baking today. Make sure you work the dough at least a little bit. And uh, on these specific cookies, don't spray the bottom of the pan. Alright. Get that dried out extra good. Yeah, I see that. Right on. Oh, really? I've been helping people with bots. Oh, right on. I thought I saw you streaming the other day. I uh, gotten a couple of your notice things. Uh, I, I see that you're streaming, and then uh, I just started a new job recently, and so uh, I see that you're streaming. Like, oh man, but I'm at work, and you know, gotta make money to pay for stuff. These cookies are. Awesome. So, uh, let me pull this camera here so you can see a little better. This, uh, as I was showing earlier, Nas, but I can give you a better showing now. So these cookies here, you see how they're like flattened, and then you see how these ones are, right? They are all cut the same size. Um, but the different ones, difference was these were cut first, then the dough got worked, and then those got cut. So you can see why it's kind of important to cut them, <laughs> to, to work the dough. Like, they were both measured and from the exact same thing. And the other part was, it said not to spray the bottom of the pan. Uh, and I read that after I sprayed the bottom of the pan, so you can see the toastingness that it got. Um, whereas, like, these ones that the pan was not sprayed... See, it almost looks like this was like pan fried, really, like in a pan, whereas this looks more like it was actually baked like a cake, you know what I mean? So, learned something today. Got to see how things worked a little bit differently. <laughs> hey, Kathy Lee, Mom, how's it going? How are you? Yeah, they taste so good. Um, so, everyone, if you haven't know, Kathy Lee there is my mom, and these recipe for these cookies came from her. Um, from her great-grandfather, my great-great-grandfather, and I was just showing, um, <laughs> that's what I was just saying, I greased the pan, and it crisped the crap out of the bottom, because apparently you're not supposed to, I only, I only greased, uh, I, I, I did a bunch of pans worth, so I only greased the first batch, and then I realized that was a mistake, so I didn't do that, then the first batch, I didn't work the dough very much, so you can see how flat and cakey they came out. Um, and so then the second batch, I learned to work the dough a little bit better. <laughs> yeah, uh, Nas, thank you. Yeah, I, I learned that today, actually, <laughs> just now. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Um, but, um, yeah, they came out awesome. So I got a whole pal here. The only thing that didn't come out awesome, and that we still got to fix and work on, and we're going to do right now, is my icings. My icings came out, well, let me show you. 
So the first icing is this one. This one came out great. This icing here is a cream cheese, butter, and uh, powdered sugar one. I like cream cheese ones. Then the other one is, oh, it started to thicken. This one is a milk one. I use milk and butter and powdered sugar. But for some reason, it did not thicken and congeal the way I was hoping it to. So I don't know what I did wrong <laughs> with the milk and the butter. And uh, if you were here earlier and watched me, you all probably would have laughed because it was it was quite a corny disaster. Um, but uh, so. <laughs> yeah, so, okay, so you don't want to work the dough too much. You, you do want to work the dough, but not too much. I learned that. So I started working it, and then I was afraid, like, what's too much? And then I was like, I don't know. I don't care. We're just going to find out. So so here's my milk and butter powdered sugar mix. It's real, it's real cream, like, you know, so I don't know how to thicken it to make it to the icing. I don't know what turns it into that, or do you, I just keep adding more powdered sugar until it does, or am I supposed to like put it on and rebake them or something? I don't know. <laughs> um, but yeah, I yeah heavy cream, and I almost did, and I was like, ah, I always use heavy cream when I make a uh, whipped cream and stuff like that, and yeah, I ended up using milk, and I failed. So <laughs> um, it happens. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to set up these two trays here. I'm going to put my cookies on them. I'm also going to take a picture. Add a teaspoon of cornstarch. Excellent. Thank you. A teaspoon of cornstarch. That's a good idea. Uh, yeah, that makes sense. So we're gonna try it. A teaspoon of cornstarch. See if we can see if we can help our help our problem out here. Might need more than a teaspoon. <laughs> I used a cup of milk and a half a cup of butter. And then I started putting um, powdered sugar in. And one of you were probably going to tell me I put way too much of something or not enough of something and I've ruined it. So I might not have enough butter. Maybe that's it. Maybe I just need more butter. I don't know. <laughs> so a little bit of, little bit of cornstarch. Whip it. I'm going to let that sit for just a moment. I'm going to load our cookies up here. They taste so good too. Yeah, I use I use cornstarch a lot for thickening soups and things like that. Um, also, it's a great substitute for soups instead of flour, so that you can do gluten free. Um, I definitely like my cornstarch, uh, but I did not realize for baking. <laughs> As we stated, I'm not a baker, and you are, so that's why I appreciate the information. Um, yeah, it's, yeah, that's why I, yeah, I didn't even think of that. that would, cornstarch could be used for many of things. Also, when I'm making, like, if I'm making a batter for deep frying, I like to mix equal parts of flour with cornstarch to help with the crispiness. So let's see, we got 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 2, 22 on here. Alright, so let's see how far we can get with our cream cheese dressing. Or cream cheese, um, Icing. <laughs> Do you live down w where uh, Wicked Bowie lives, or are you down in Georgia? Is that where you're at? I think that's where Wicked Bowie's in Georgia, right? Because you guys are like, you guys neighbors or something, or I don't know. We're just good friends or something. I don't know. It sounded like you guys live nearby or something. 
All right, so we're just icing these cookies. As you can see, I'm a totally a professional icing maker, icing guys, right? <laughs> so when you use a cream cheese, um, like this icing, it's cream cheese and, and butter and powdered sugar. It doesn't need refrigerated, does it? Like, do you have to refrigerate these cookies because it has a cream cheese, or does the butter and powdered sugar help uh, make it okay to not have to be refrigerated? I just kind of thought of that. Kalamazoo, Missouri? Oh, okay. Nice. Michigan. So if you use the cream cheese one, you have to refrigerate the cookie then, huh? So all these ones that I do with this cream cheese icing has to be refrigerated. So all the so in that case, I'm just going to do one tray of the cream cheese cookies dressing or icing because I don't have enough room in my refrigerator to do a whole stack of the cream cheese ones. Cream cheese icing is by far my favorite icing. But I did not realize that What about the milk and butter one? When you use heavy cream, does that icing need to be refrigerated? When you use the milk and the butter and the powdered sugar, the other do, do you have to refrigerate? I know the icing itself, but after you put it on the cookie, do you have to refrigerate it, or, or should I only use this icing for a couple of these? And the ones that I'm going to send to you guys, I should probably go and uh, just buy a store-bought icing and put on so that it's safe to ship. That's where I'm really getting at. This like, what am I going to have to refrigerate or not? That's what I'm wondering. That's cool that they freeze nicely. What I'm trying to get at, layer in a dish between parchment and wax paper. But what, I, what I'm trying to get at is I want cookies that I can set on my counter and just have sitting out. Or cookies in, in sense like I want to send you guys some cookies. And um, maybe I'll just have to send you guys them without the icing and then send you with the recipe to make the icing. I don't know. Um, or just use store-bought icing so that it can be used. It can be shipped. I don't know. I'm trying to figure out how I can ship these safely to you guys. So, if you have an idea on that. Oh, just like a powdered sugar and water. That doesn't sound that great, though. I might just have to send the cookies without the icing and send the recipe with it. <laughs> or, uh... Oh, you know what? I wonder if I could buy like those little tubies of icings or something. I don't know. I'll figure something out. Okay, so I, so same with the milk icing too. I, I have to refrigerate both these icings then, huh? Well, if that's the case, I'm not going to ice all of these. My plan was I was going to ice them all and put them all away. <laughs> um... So yeah, in that case, um, hmm, do I have parchment paper? That's another good question. Um, ooh. Oh, I got wax paper. You said wax paper works, right? Parchment or wax. Okay, cool. I got wax paper. That's what I'm using. I'm going to put wax there. I'm just going to do one layer like this, because these will just be for me in my house. Yeah, I'm just going to do a couple here for the house. Yeah, sh I'll ship them not iced. I was kind of hoping it could be all iced and nice and... Well, then how the hell do people ship cookies? Like, you order them online and other stuff, and you see, like, frosted cookies and iced cookies, and, like, you see them at the store sitting on the shelf um, from the bakery section, and they're sitting out on the shelf with icing and stuff on them, um, or a glaze or something. So how, how do they do that? Why can't... How come they get to do it and I don't? That's not fair. I want to make an icing that I can put on, like, the grocery store, 
Because the grocery store has, they have their donuts sitting in the shelf, you know, with icing on their donuts. And they have their cookies sitting out in the display cases with icing on it. And they're not in refrigerators and stuff. So, so how come I have to have a refrigerator? How come I can't be cool like them? Is there something that they're doing that's super cool that I need to do? Because I'll do it. I'll freaking do it right now, man. A water-based icing use margarine with the water-based? Hmm. I might just have to go to the grocery store and be like, what kind of icing you guys use that doesn't even refrigerated? Because this is garbage. <laughs> it, I guess, I guess my problem is that I always get bothered when... I'm told I can't do something or do something like if there's something that I want to do and somebody's like you can't do it that way or you shouldn't do it like this or and then like I turn around and I see other places that do it and it's just like how come how come I can't and they can you know like what, what a perfect example is um, my backdrop I have this tie-dyed backdrop piece and somebody was like oh it soaks up too much light you shouldn't use it I'm like I don't care it looks cool in the background you know how come other you know, like, other places using, like, stuff like that in camera. I don't know, anytime somebody tells me I can't do something, and I see it done, I get aggravated, and I gotta figure out how I can do it, too. Because I can't be the only one not doing it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, a gelatin base. The milk is okay if air sealed, but a gelatin base... Okay, now we're talking. See, we're making progress. We're making progress. Gelatin, margarine, water. So now I have a new goal is to look up all of this together and make a make one that's gonna make it. All right, and these are my three flattened cookies. <laughs> So these cookies, though, without the icing, um, the gelatin base is great for icing, but may not, but many don't use. Okay. Um, so like this tray here, uh, would you recommend? Uh oh. My camera froze. There we go. So this this tray here. What did you, so since I'm not going to ice them, would you recommend that I can just wrap it with um, saran wrap and let it sit on the counter? Or should I wrap it in saran wrap and put it in the refrigerator? Um, I'm probably going to ship them on Monday. I mean, obviously. Um, so, can they just sit in saran wrap? Or, or actually, I'll put them in Ziploc baggies. Um, will they be fine in Ziploc baggies? Um, how long will they stay moist and good for before they go bad? Or before they start getting dried out and crappy, I guess is what I should say. One left behind. Not margarine? What? I'm all kind of lost. I'm going to have to look it up later. But, <laughs> anyways, um, yeah, I think I'm just going to put them in the Ziploc bags. And let them hang out there. So this icing started to get a little thicker. I'm going to put it to the fridge. I might have to chalk that one up as a fail for the moment. One, because I'm obviously not going to... Part of the reason I made these icings, is, and I, and I didn't think about it, but part of the reason for making the icing like that is because I was excited to put it on the cookie and ship it to you guys. But apparently, um, I can't do that. So... <laughs> um, Yeah. Oh, that is right. I do remember that. You would have a whole stack. We'd have a whole stack of cookies, and they'd never be iced. 
I do remember that, and I was always like, how come these aren't iced? I'd always be, like, grumpy about it. Like, I'd always want a cookie, and they wouldn't be iced. And, like, why did she only ice, like, three of them? We have all day. Let's ice all of them. Gosh. And so that makes sense. <laughs> um, I know they'll work in the Ziploc bag, and the, the bacteria is fine. Um, what I was just curious is, like, um, how long they could stay in the Ziploc bag before they, like, turn into dried-out crap, you know? Countdown until I can. <laughs> All right, let's see how our um, let's see how our Afghani dish is looking here. You guys ready for this? Oh man. Look at that. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh, it looks so good, guys. Oh yeah, man, they taste exactly like I remember. They taste so good. The first bite I had, I was saying earlier, it reminded me of being a kid again. They were delicious. They taste exactly like it. Alright, let's try this beautiful stuff out. Yeah, a little, little raisin on there. A little beef, a little rice. Mmm. Oh, God. Mmm. The meat is so tender. It has been cooked. The rice. There's so much flavor in the rice. Because the rice soaked all of that flavor up. Mmm. That is a fantastic dish. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, so Kathy Lee is, um, uh, is my mom. Yeah. If, uh, so, I, th I thought I said that, I'm sorry. Yeah, Kathy Lee is my mom, and so this cookie recipe is her great-grandfather's, my great-great-grandfather's cookie recipe um, from the early 1900s from his bakery. And so my mom sent me the recipe, so, um, yeah, she just got off work and seeing how the recipe came out. And, uh, yeah. And so, yeah, Mom, Nas is a baker. She has a baking degree and stuff like that and does streaming as well. Also a food streamer. Um, does some fantastic baking stuff. And, uh, yeah, um, I'm going to be hooking up with the uh, recipe because you would definitely want to try and make these cookies, I'm telling you. <laughs> oh, my God. I can't stop eating. It's so good. Like... Alright, I'm going to put some in a bowl here. <laughs> oh my gosh. So yeah, she is out in Pittsburgh. Uh, my mom, Kathy Lee, is out in Pittsburgh. And I'm here in Montana. So, like I said, I'm originally from the Pittsburgh area. And I've lived out here the last 10 years. So Twitch is also really cool. Because... Mom gets the seafood I make too, which is awesome. <laughs> yeah, and I was just like, oh, I need this cookie recipe. Heck yeah. Like I said, my mom made this for me all the time when I was a kid for Christmas and, and cri all the holidays. That was the signature holiday dish. And, like, I haven't had the cookie in a few years. So getting to experience it and eat it this afternoon is just such a treat and so awesome. And to share it with you guys is even cooler, because I love you guys. You guys are all awesome, all you viewers out there, hanging out, being cool. Hmm. Um, I just got to clean this cutting board real quick. I like to display my food on this cutting board. It's just a nice cutting board to display on. Um...
Yeah, Nos knows a little bit about kitchen work. You know, a little bit. <laughs> yeah, you got all kinds of things for me. That's so cool. I love food and cooking. All right. Photo time. This sheet shouldn't be there. I should move this one. Taking a moment here to take a couple of snapshots of the work. So they can go on to our website. Um, yeah. Do you st uh, have you gotten rid of any or are you still collecting them? Because, oh, she had hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of cookie cutters every different kind every different occasion and it was always awesome it was never a bad thing um and so i gave her i gave her a, uh some crap earlier because she sent me out this box with all these recipes and stuff and there's this extra room in the box so she had to use some paper to stuff the extra room and i was like you sent me a cookie a cookie recipe with all this room in the box and I didn't even get one cookie cutter. I had to use a pint glass to cut the cookies because I didn't even have a cookie cutter. I'll tell you what. <laughs> I'll, just, I'll just give you a hard time. Uh, but yeah, it was, it was pretty funny. <laughs> I'm not worthy of the cookie cutters. <laughs> I know, because I'm not a baker. I'm trying. I wish this camera would not take such blurry pictures sometimes. I try really hard to get a nice picture, and it doesn't always like to... It's like as soon as I push down on the button, it turns the camera just a hairline, and then it doesn't like... Why? <laughs> it's funny because I have a buddy in Michigan. You've seen him in chat. Um, uh, YU. If you see YU TV, he uh, he's a game streamer, and uh, he he's from that area um, outside of Detroit. And uh, we were actually talking about potentially me trying to go out to that direction to go to. Um, to go to like one of the cons, either the Comic Con or um, something of the effect. Um, but Yumacon? No, we were thinking of, uh, what was the con? Um, uh, not Comic-Con, it was, uh, oh, it's like Comic-Con. I can't remember the name of it. But, yeah. Mm. 
That beef dish is so good, guys. I can't even begin to tell you. Gen Con? Hmm. That'd be cool. I want to go to a con. Like, I live out here in... So, I live in Montana, right? And out here in Montana, basically, nothing... You know, none of the big cons or festivals like that are anywhere near here. So, if I were to go to a, a, a Comic-Con of some form... Um, I basically have the option to go to any one of them in the country because none of them are close by. So, I mean, if I go to one in L.A. or Vegas or Detroit or uh, Miami, Florida or Austin, Texas, if I go to any one of those, it's going to be the same amount of money for me to go there, be it a plane, train, bus, automobile, I mean, whatever. Um, I'm far enough away from all of those locations that it's the same money to go to any one of them. <laughs> so, one day I would, uh, I, I want to go to a con really bad one day. And so, I've been debating on which one to go to and, uh, and when and where. So, yeah, who knows, one day, whenever, when, whenever I have money, you know. <laughs> mm. Wow, guys. Okay. So, that's all I got for stream. Um, so, I have some giveaways, because we want to do these cookie giveaways. So, first I'm going to see if this raffle thing works on Ankbot. Um, Gen Con? Nice. I haven't been to any cons. I, I, I want to go to any of them. I don't care which one. I just want to go to one. Um, God, that meat is so good. It's so sweet and delicious. Oh, my God. Mm. Alright, let me see, excuse me, if Ankbot's, um, little raffle thing is going to work, right? And then if not, I'm, I'll probably just do something with hanging numbers up or so, but, um, everyone who is here, in order to win a delivery of anything... Uh, you must be a follower, so if you have not hit that follow button, and if you have not hit that follow button, go ahead and hit that follow button, and, um, yeah.